Hi, Coach. Just open up uh, <laughs> talking about the two wins over the weekend, if you would. Well, never easy on the road, so good um, good wins. We were, we were very fortunate at, at Corpus. I thought we had a workmanlike win at UIW. Um, got off to a good start. Could never pull away from them. They, they, they would make runs, so we could never pull away. But uh, at a you know, working margin most of the game. Corpus, we started off pretty well. We had the five, six-point lead in the first half. They cranked up their their um, their pressure and cranked up their their physicality, we didn't respond very well to that. We didn't play very well through contact. We kind of begged for the ball instead of cut, uh, which was which was which was not good. So, um, you know, we uh, got ourselves in a hole, and we're fortunately able to come back and make a play at the end. But, you know, we got to be better in our six-minute game. Our free throws have got to be better. We were solid on defense. We didn't turn the ball over very much, which was which was good. Uh, we turned the ball over eight times in the first half, four times in the second half against against uh, Corpus. Uh, but we got to keep our turnovers down and um, play better. But we've got New Orleans coming in, leading scorer in the league this weekend. Um, uh, Johnson, he's playing tremendous, coming off 35 points at, at Houston Christian uh, Monday night, and uh, the other kid 20 scored scored a ton as well. So. Uh, New Orleans is traditionally one of the better teams in the league, so hopefully we'll have a good crowd here Saturday and get, be, good to, uh, be good to be back home. Monday, obviously, the big problem is free throws, but what, what did you, when you guys got down 18 and when they were going on that run, what was kind of the message to the team to stay in it? I mean, look, there's, I mean, our guys know we're just going to kind of chip away and Stay at it and, and see where we are. You know, see where we are when we get to the six minute game. See, with, see with, if we're within three possessions. We can be within three possessions in the six minute game. We got a lot of confidence. So, the whole 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 key there is just chop it down until you can get to the six minute game within three possessions. Which by six minutes we were a lot less than three possessions. We had it to to one or two possessions. And you know, at that point, our guys have have a lot of confidence. That's something we spend a lot of time working on and talking about. The the fact that you may miss the free throws and makes the shot kind of his redemption, this season's redemption for you. Is it kind of a re redemption season for a lot of kids? Do you see them in what they've gone through in the Sounds past? Sounds like you already have your story written. <laughs> <laughs> you look at DJ gave it to him. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what do you want me to say? Sure, yeah. Yeah, it is. Is that, is that something you guys have talked about? And it's, it's no, we hadn't really, talked, we hadn't really talked about it. Um, yeah, I think there's obviously some parallels there as you've so kindly pointed out, um, but uh, no, we haven't we haven't talked about that. But I do think um, you know we have a lot of guys that have a chip on their shoulder. A lot of guys that maybe things haven't gone exactly how they wanted it to go in their career, and they came here to to turn their career around. Our program hadn't gone exactly how it's wanted to go for a while, and so we came here to turn the program around. So I, I certainly think there's some some parallels. Uh, parallels with that. Now, if you want to put redemption on it or whatever, whatever terminology you want to use, that's it's up to a wordsmith like yourself. <laughs> Going back to Saturday, um, Mike had 20, and obviously he was a big part of Monday night as well. What have you seen from him, and what does that do for you guys having another piece to uh, rely on? Well, there's another option. I thought Cooper played really well on Monday night. He was one guy who wasn't begging for the ball. He was cutting. He was moving. He was playing around the rim, <laughs> doing what he does. I thought he played really well. <clears throat> you know, we got to have some consistency with Mike. He played pretty well against UIW. He didn't play as well against Corpus. Uh, but we got great belief in him. We got great belief in all of our guys. I think, you know, Cam Jones is somebody that we've been playing. He just hasn't played up to his capabilities. He's somebody who's a, he, he's a really good player. He's a double-digit scorer as a Division One player. And we keep putting him in there, waiting for him to, to break out and make some things happen. And I think he's going he's gonna to play well for us, too. But we have, we have a lot of confidence. Anybody we put in the game is because we got confidence in them. They've, they've built their, that trust with us through practice and through their habits. And so, you know, we always say, show me what you can do, and I'll put you in the game. A lot of guys want it where, you know, put me in the game, and I'll show you what, you, what I can do. It's, 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 it's the invert of that. You show me what you can do, and then I'll, I'll play you. Um, and so, uh, you know, we've, we've uh, got confidence in those guys, and, and Mike's somebody that hopefully will continue to get better as he gets more experience and more playing time. Going off that, DJ was obviously the spark plug for the comeback. He went on the 9 2. Did he tell eight. you that? He did not. He was obviously the spark plug. Well, I mean, he went okay. on a 9-2 run by himself and got the 
first point. Sounds like something he would say. That's why I was asking. He did not. He was talking about candy. But um, but talk about DJ and obviously what he was he was capable of making a couple shots. When I think. That, I mean, how many players in college basketball this year have three straight games with a four point play? I mean, that's unbelievably impressive um, to be able to make the threes when he got when, when he gets fouled. And so um, I thought that was I thought that was that that was that was impressive. And um, you know. He's a he's a weapon. I mean, he's he's a big time weapon. Uh, he's instant offense. Um, you know, if you, it, it's almost deflating when he misses because every time he shoots, you think it's going in. Like every time he gets a clean look, I think it, I mean I think it's in. So when he misses, it's like oh, man, you, as soon as he shoots, you already put three points on the board. <laughs> you know, so it's deflating when he misses. That's that's when you know you've got a really really uh, good shooter. I've 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 I've, been, I've, I've never coached a shooter. The only one I've coached that's as good as him was Troy Daniels. Play, he ended up playing in the NBA. He played for us at VCU. He had 133s his senior year. He had more than eight teams hit as a team. He hit his senior year, Troy Daniels. It's an interesting stat you can look up. But anyway, uh, I mean, DJ's is as good of a I mean, and, and Troy played played in the NBA, carved out a nice NBA career. And, and um, you know, DJ's as good a shooter as I've seen uh, since then. And certainly he makes timely ones. He's not scared of the moment. You saw the three hit against ULL, so he's a he's a he's a very very um, good piece to have. Coach, kind of following up on Jim's story, after he pointed out, um, DJ mentioned about you know his his year last year was had a lot of losses, wasn't very successful. Talk a little bit more. Yeah, about tell him we win more in a month here than he won all yeah. year there. Um, <laughs> Talk a little bit more about this. this I have to remind him sometimes where he came from. You got to keep him humble. <laughs> this, this, this power of something to prove. When you've got competent and talented players, and and they have that that internal motivation to prove something to themselves and to outsiders that are in the in the game, is that uh, expound on that a little bit? And, and how does that? How's your coaching? Is that like a coach's dream to a certain degree to have a mix of, of guys like that? Well, I mean, you've got to develop that. You know, all the guys think they're, you know, every, everybody, all of us in here, everybody, you know, thinks they're better than they are at what they do. That's that's just natural. I think I'm. I mean, we all do, right? So you've got to make sure everybody understands who they are, and then try to, uh, you know, you've got to look. You've got to try to find some commonalities with 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 the guys and, and find something that they can rally around. And so we, we went on a team retreat, and I thought that really helped us find the commonality, find some of the uh, find some of the traits that we needed. And, and, and then, you know, we, we, the guys have, have, have certainly <coughs> fallen, into <coughs> fallen into line with, with um, you know, with where those, where those are. And, uh, you know, when you got a common goal and you, you got some common struggle, uh, to get to that goal, uh, a lot of times you can be a pretty pretty tight knit group. So uh, that's what we have, and you know we got to keep it that way because winning can can pull you apart too. You know because winning because now you got you know shoot y'all are winning by this and you score 12 points, you can take two more bad shots and see if you can get a few extra points. It doesn't matter. It's not going to hurt the team, but that affects other people. So like winning attracts a lot of issues too. So you got to stay you got to stay uh, vigilant. On, uh, on everything. Looking forward to Saturday. You mentioned they have the top league's top score. What are you guys kind of focusing on as you uh, prepare for New Orleans? Well, we're going to have to be – I mean, first off, our offense has got to be better. I'm mad as hell about our offense and how we played at Corpus. That was soft, and we were, we were bad. And so we got to get that fixed. We got to be way better offensively. We got to be way stronger with the ball. We got to finish better in the paint. We got to finish better at the rim. Um, so we're we're going to get that fixed. So that's the first thing is we got to we got to get way tougher uh, offensively and being able to play through contact. New Orleans is physical. They got big kids down there. They're just going to throw bodies at us. Um, and then you know we got to do a good job on their guards. I mean, we got to do a really really good job on their guards. They've got you know Johnson, but they've they've got two dynamic guards. Twenty twenty is coming off of a, a huge game. I think he had twenty five plus at, at 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 Houston Christian. And so um, you know we've got to understand that that. Um, you know they're one of the the best programs in our league. They're going to be physical. They're going to come in here. They're going to come after us. And Johnson's a, a, a very very good player. He trains with Cam and, and Cullum when they're back home. Uh, they all know each other extremely extremely well. They I mean Cam's known him since he was, you know, three years old. 
Um, they call him Poppy, and he's, he's, he's a great kid. I've met him. But, um, you know, look, I mean, we, we've got a big challenge. I mean, he's, he, he's going to shoot a ton of balls. He's going to get a ton of looks, and, and we've, got to, we've got to make sure that we're contesting him. Our switching's got to be on point. Our red zone's got to be on point. Our defensive rotations are a half second late right now. We've got to get that stuff corrected. Uh, our baseline out of bounds offense is atrocious. We've got to get that corrected. Um, there's, there, we got, we got a lot of stuff to fix this week. That's the way back, I look at it. Coming back home, um, Matt put out yesterday hoping for more engagement from the fans. Well written piece. Best piece I've read all year. <laughs> Not his Can't get that in the local rag, huh? <laughs> <laughs> but he'll still get that. <laughs> just warm it up for tonight, Jim. I'm just getting warmed up. Looking forward to it, believe me. Just getting warmed up. <laughs> he sent it to me, so I read it. He texted me and said, hey, what do you think he about it? He didn't this? read anything. He, I, read he anything. sent it to me. I read it. Have you ever sent me one of your articles to read? No. Well, then why would I read it? <laughs> he sent it to me and said, hey, I wrote this. I, you know, I normally don't do this. And I hit the thumb up emoji, and I said, sounds good. <laughs> So going off of that, what would kind of be your message uh, to Lake Charles and hoping for more engagement? As I think our engagement's been great. I mean, I think the people that have, have come have been have been phenomenal. And I think Matt Matt's point was well taken. Like we've got people in the building. I think the crowds have been great. But you know, can we get the students? Can we get people like standing up and and and, and really really uh, engaged with the guys as we as we as we make exciting plays and as you know, it's on us to make the plays, but. I mean, the crowd support's been phenomenal. We can't we can't ask for anything more than that, especially as you travel around the league and and, and see some of the other, uh, you know, some of the support at some of the other places. That's no knock on them, but but our our, our fan support second to none in this league, and um, you know we want people to keep coming out and while they're here enjoy themselves and get on their feet and make a little bit of noise. Are you worried about Johnson getting people in foul trouble, especially Garcia, things like that? Well, Garcia gets himself in foul trouble. He doesn't need Johnson to get him in foul trouble. Um, but yeah, we're worried about foul trouble. That's one of the reasons having Saunders helps us. We were so thin at the guard spot. But yeah, I mean, yeah, I'm worried about, I worry about foul trouble every game. But Johnson is certainly somebody who can draw a bunch of fouls, uh, who can make it, uh, make it difficult, uh, make it difficult on us. So yeah, we need to be, we need to be on point. Uh, we need to be on point against him for sure. 17-2. Going for the best record, best start in program history on Saturday. What do you think of that? And DJ talked about they should be, they wanted to be 19 and 0. They thought they should be 19 and 0. Um, what do you think they should have been? DJ. <laughs> uh, I mean, look, I mean, everybody would have signed up for 17 and 2, I think. Uh, so, uh, you know, I mean, did we? You know, we didn't play very well against Louisiana Tech. We weren't beating them. So where he gets 19 and 0 from, I don't know. You know, the Western Carolina game, we probably could have won. But, but uh, look, 17-2, 17-2 is pretty good. There's a reason it hasn't been done in a long time. There's a reason it's very difficult to do. I mean, I think there's only four or five teams in the country that have won 17 games. I think like Purdue, UConn, us, Samford, and. I mean that, that that may be the list. There may be one or two more, but I mean that I mean that's that's extremely extremely uh, you know challenging to do. And I think that's 13 of them are Division One wins, which is which is which is very challenging. So <laughs> it says a lot about our guys. It says a lot about how well we've played, how consistent we've been. And now we've got to just keep it moving forward. Continue continue going forward. Coach, how is the, through, through six how's that 23 looking, Jim? Pretty good. Yeah. Pretty good. That'd be your See, y'all thought I was crazy. Through through first six games of the league, coach, um, how has the team adapted? I mean, each team is going to have a little bit of difference. You talk about commonalities. How have they adapted to the dip through the first six? Yeah, it'll be interesting. It's different because New Orleans will be the. It would be another time we've played. But Northwestern on Monday is the first time we've played the, a team a second time. Right. Like we played Northwestern twice. We hadn't even seen um, freaking Nichols or, or Houston, uh, uh, what are they called? Houston Christian. We hadn't even seen we had Baptist Christian. I get them all mixed up. Uh, uh, I guess I want to be more inclusive now. Uh, but I hadn't even seen uh, – we, had, we hadn't even seen those guys yet, and we're going to have played Northwestern State twice. So it's just a – 
it's a funky schedule, but certainly hopefully the second time we can adjust a little bit more to what teams were doing and what teams are doing. And so, you know, everybody plays differently. You know, UIW took uh, Cooper's man and double teamed Hade with him, you know, and then, you know, uh, co uh, Corpus came out and pressured. And, you know, so, I mean, everybody does something different. Everybody's got different different game plan. And so, you know, you got to kind of see what they do. and. And, and adjust, and I, hopefully we'll be better. Historically, our teams have been much better the second time around we play guys when we when we know what we got going on, and we've been we've been pretty good there. Going off of that, what are the challenges that come with that as teams? Not only you see them twice, but they're now seeing you twice, and they can adjust to what they've seen. Yeah, I mean we got to stay ahead of them, so we got to adjust. They got to adjust, and we got to we got to stay a step ahead as best we can. All right, coach. Appreciate it, coach. I'll start it off. Um, I mean, nothing you guys do can really surprise the, the collective anymore, but 18 points with 13 minutes, did that kind of surprise you a bit? Um, Against that team on the road? Nah, I mean, it's kind of hard to explain because every time we're in a game with the, like, the, the guys that we have, it's – we don't ever feel like we're out the game. Like I feel like Coach said early on in the season, like you got to make sure, like you put the car in reverse and make sure that we're really down because we don't ever give up. And once we see a little bit of life, we take advantage of it and then we attack it until we got to go a different route. What were, what were those discussions like in timeouts in the huddle when you guys just couldn't find a bucket and got down 18? What were those discussions like? Um, honestly, at first it was like we we was just looking like around, like we was like, there's so many players over here. Somebody's gonna like light a spark. Someone's gonna get us going because I think we went like seven minutes without scoring or something like that. So, and it's hard when like teams are starting to get on a hot day, starting to send two people on him and make it difficult for him. But um, we're, we're gonna adjust. So we won't get back in that situation to make y'all a little nervous anymore. <laughs> Do you feel like you had to be the spark at that point in time because you got hot? Um, I mean, I wouldn't want to say, like, I just felt like it was handed to me, like, in that situation because we play off of, like, how the defense is guarding, kind of. So once I seen that they was just denying everybody else, I'm like, well, I guess it's, I, I guess we got to see if this way works. So we tried different ways to attack, and it just so happened to, this, my shot started going in. I seen – a few free throws go in, and then after that, it was like, okay, now let's get this let's get this show started. Have you ever been a part of a team that made a comeback of that magnitude? Nah, I mean in AAU, but that really don't count. Like in college, <laughs> in college, I don't know if y'all seen my record last year. I don't even want to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> what's, what's your What's your ability to? You've had three straight games with four point plays. What's your ability to get four point plays? Uh, I don't. I don't really know. Like. I think they'd be so worried about, like, me getting my shot off to where they'd be trying to close out super hard and trying to, like, and they don't really let me land. Like, I've been having problems with that all year because they've been so worried about my shot. But I just shoot the ball. They run me over. They make it easier on me. <laughs> Winning a game in that fashion, what does that tell you about this team as you guys move forward? Honestly, because, like, people – like I'm getting text messages, people talking about how I got the like the the spark or something like that. But honestly, like if you watch the game over again, it was really like a real team effort. Like once I seen a few going, then you seen Garcia going downhill, starting to get some tough layups, and then Shu came big off the bench, and then that got Hade. We we gave Hade like a break to where like they they forgot about him, and then he made a three to where it's like okay now everybody's starting to mesh. Like it's starting to look like how we've been playing all year so really every game we just look for that spark and like even the first game of the season like we were it looked rough against VCU and then JG made a layup and then after he made a layup then it just after that it was like a whole different team so we just wait for that one person to get us going because there's so many of us and as you can see Mike is back so it's just so many of us <laughs> what, what, uh, what do you think about the start 17 and 2 did you guys see this coming we really want to be 19 and 0. We got those. We got two games that hunt us to this day. And every time that we get down, and we we just be like, remember that feeling, and we don't want to feel that feeling again. To feel like we didn't leave it all on the court. And honestly, if I was to say 17 and 2, I mean, 
It's one thing to say it because, like, you go in every season thinking that you're going to have a good season. But actually seeing it, it's amazing. And now that we see it, like, I feel like it really just shows how resilient the team is because not every game has been easy. Like, we had to fight. Like, I think three of the conference games we had to – we were down and we had to – so it's – we know we're getting everybody best shot, so we have to – we got to start hitting people first now. Speaking, speaking of the best shots, and this is a little bit taboo to, to talk mm-hmm. about streaks, but the current mm-hmm. winning streak, the, uh, the uh, uh, unbeaten in conference so far, mm-hmm. um, speaking of best shots, teams, that's just another thing to put on a chalkboard. Let's mm-hmm. chalk a loss up to Magnese, break the winning streak. Yeah. You guys, do you guys feel the, the – the, a little bit of angst of, okay, when is it coming? When is it coming? And mm-hmm. there's some school of thought is maybe it's better to lose one so you, can, so you don't get that amped up from the competition. Thoughts on that? Um... I don't. I feel like we don't really want to go into any game thinking about losing. And I know that teams come in here thinking like we want to break that win streak, but at the end of the day, we play to a standard to where like if we have those standards and we and we do what we're supposed to do, we feel like we should win the game. So, like win streak. The, the win streak came after all the stuff that we've been through and the standards that we hold ourselves to. And if we keep doing the things that got us here the the wins will just keep coming and like so we don't go in a game thinking like we got this on the line we got this win streak like we just go out there like okay we beat them what's next like after after corporates now we're we got UNO you know so we're just like we're focused on them and we go in there with the same mindset like we we want to win the game we want to win every game that we play and we got comfortable early on in the season and we know how that feels when it gets comfortable and we don't want to be back there because that's how we had two losses in like what was it four games or something like that so we don't because once you get comfortable it's hard to get uncomfortable so it's best to just stay uncomfortable to where we don't get back in that bad spot you mentioned a second ago a couple of the wins haven't been come easy mm-hmm. obviously there's a reason you guys got down 18 what are you guys focusing on as you head into saturday um just being tough I just I feel like like because I was in foul trouble early and that like messed up like kind of like the rotation and it's tough when like it looks like JG's gonna foul out every game now huh? it looks like <laughs> he's gonna get over where he watches this but like I, I gotta know that okay if like if I see JG already in foul trouble I can't be in foul trouble too because like we both averaged double digits so it it kind of messed up the the scoring like balance to it left Hade kind of out there like dry for a little bit to where like Omar's trying to get everybody involved that's like that's what he does everybody plays their role to like the best they do and like it was really just Hade was like the really only like scorer for real out there by himself and she was having a rough game to where like if she was having a rough game JG would pick him up and which he got going early and then he just got in foul trouble so it's just yeah, I just got to – it was just a situation thing, I feel like. And we got – they were tougher than us at the beginning of the game. And we try to get tough by fouling them. And me and JG can't do that, especially JG. And JG, if you watch this, stop fouling. Foul in every game. <laughs> um, obviously, Saturday, Mike went for 20. What is adding another piece into the rotation do for you guys? It's amazing. Like, you, you never know. Like I literally posted saying, at this point, you just got to choose your poison. Like it's, we got so many scores, and it, it, I don't feel like it's our problem. I feel like it's coach's problem. Like who is he going to? Like it, it's so many of us. It's like man, I don't even know. Like I feel like we put him in a tough situation to where he doesn't even know who to put out there sometimes because it's like it's so many of us, and that's a blessing. I feel like because of that. I feel like that's what makes our team the like as good. I feel like that's why we're seventeen and two. And I honestly feel Mike coming in the time that he came was like perfect. And now that he's here, I feel like we it's gonna be fun. You said a second ago you don't think going into games about what you could do if you win this, that, and the other thing. Mm-hmm. But if you guys win on Saturday, it's the best start in program history. What does that mean to you to be a part of a team that has the opportunity mm. to do something like that? Man, that's crazy. See, like we all like that's crazy because I didn't even know that. But we just, I promise you, we just like go into games like with the same mindset that we do when we were like zero and zero. But like 
That's crazy. Like, I, that would be amazing to be, like, one of the teams that, like, that we're going to be the team that people start chasing, like, history-wise. So, like, that would be – That'd be a fun thing to be a part of, but we got to we got to make that happen. It's not just gonna be given to us, as we can see. I mean, Commerce probably won. They won like one game, but we was down against them, so we don't we can't look at any team lightly anymore. Well, it's, just, it's crazy too that this, this program is now getting national votes mm -hmm. uh, for a national AP Top 25 ranking. Do you guys, as a collective, talk about that? Do you say, hey, let's leave that alone? <laughs> I mean, we see it, but. I mean, if y'all know Coach Wade, he doesn't let our head get too big, so <laughs> we can't really be too happy about it or look at it any type of way or, like, go, like, and just – we just know everything that we do, if we're going to have to earn it. It's going to be a little bit harder for us than everybody else. So we just got to do our part and everything and take care of yourself, honestly. Do you feel like for a lot of you guys this is a season of redemption mm -hmm. and – Kind of how you played the other day, Shoemaker gets the basket as his redemption for his those free throws. Do you feel like that's kind of your theme this year? Or I lost, I like that? I lost to him too last year. I don't think you know that. I lost to him too. They 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 blew me out by twenty. I definitely remember that before the game. I'm like, man, I was in the same position last year. I'm not. Yeah. So I feel like that what makes our team. Like we have like a we have a lot of players that I feel personally that's been overlooked. Like. Hade went to TCU. He averaged six points because his minutes wasn't where they were supposed to be. So, as y'all can see, he's an amazing player. JG, he's been through thick and thin. So, like, top to bottom, even Mike Saunders coming back now, like, if y'all look at his stats, like, it never looks like y'all wouldn't think that he would play how he plays right now because the situation that we've been put in and – We've all been slept on, and we're happy that we got someone like Coach Wade and this program to believe in us and to give us the opportunity. And we're just happy that it's going how, like, we, like, planned. And, like, before the season, this was, like, our dream. And, like, now that it's starting to happen, like, it's, like, kind of like when you get candy with your uh, parents. Like, yeah, you want Sour Patch, but – I want a Twix, Snickers, and some more stuff now that I'm here. You know what I'm saying? Like, so it's like we just want more and more. 